Here he is in grave danger, from which your grace alone can rescue him. My dear Andrew, I would render you any service. How could I refuse this request? You may tell your king that these jewels have not left my person since he gave them to me. What is the matter, my lady? Two of the diamonds are missing. There are but ten. These diamonds have never left my person. Except the evening of the ball. A certain count. Oh, I should have known. We must act quickly. Miss Felton, my jeweler. If we prevail here, we will have very little time for you to return the jewels back to Paris. I will do everything humanly possible to succeed in this affair. I believe you will. If you do succeed, how will I ever repay my debt to you? Let us understand each other, Countess. I do not do this for you, nor any reward that you may offer. I do this for my king. Riley, look at these diamonds and tell me what they are worth apiece. Hmm. Hmm. At least 1,500 pounds apiece, my lady. How many days would be required to make two new jewels exactly like those? Hmm. Hmm. At least a week, my lady. I will give you 6,000 pounds, and I must have them the day after tomorrow. Nothing easier. Come, mademoiselle. If you will take no reward, at least let me lodge you in splendor for the two days until you return. Your Majesty! Oh, have you any word from Mademoiselle d'Artagnan? Oh, Monsieur, I'm beginning to doubt that she has survived her journey. Oh, Conrad! Well, we must have The faith. Queen has arrived, Your Majesty, and has sent for you! I fear I have failed you, Your Majesty. Ah, uh, go, go, lad. Continue to watch for Mademoiselle d'Artagnan. Ah, uh, Monsieur de Chevreuse, find a way to delay the Queen a little longer. Be patient, Your Majesty. Your Majesty! You, again. Well, where's my king? His Majesty apologizes. He is uh, attending to his costume. Is he? Well, well, if you should ever wish to attend to me, tell him that I am impatiently waiting. Yes, Your Majesty. Well, what do we do now, Cardinal? Believe me, I shall be most disappointed if I have to spend the rest of the evening with you. I understand, Your Majesty. Perhaps I can offer a diversion. I have a gift for you, one which you will find most amusing. Are you sure? Two diamonds. These are very like the jewels that you insisted I insist appear upon my king. Whatever does this mean, Cardinal? Oh, nothing. I merely wonder why such valuable jewels would have left your husband's possession. If your king arrives tonight wearing his diamonds, which I doubt he will, I advise you to count them, and when you find but ten, ask him what might he have done with the other two. You are most mysterious, Cardinal. No doubt you have your reasons. Come, come, you may watch me practice my steps as we wait.
forgive me, your majesty. Stop. I thank you for paying me your deference by wearing your jewels. However, I announce that you have lost two of your diamonds. Allow me to return them to you. Your Majesty, why do you give me these two diamonds? Well, your gift is most generous, for now I have fourteen. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, huit, neuf, dix, onze, douze. What does this mean, Cardinal? It means I wish to give the king two beautiful diamonds, but not daring to offer them myself, I've adopted this rather indirect method instead. Well, I am always thankful for the Cardinal's devotion. And I'm sure that these two diamonds cost you far more than the other twelve cost her, her majesty. <laughs> Let us go to dinner. Rochefort? Explain yourself. Her grace, it was D'Artagnan. That young Gaskin who brought the diamonds back from Buckingham. We have been beat. So let us have our revenge. Shall I have my woman arrest her? Oh no, she's a capable woman. France has need for women like that. But seize the tailor. The girl's in love with him. His disappearance will teach her the consequences of provoking my displeasure. D'Artagnan, you have saved the king. He wishes you to accept this in his honor. But I did not do this only for the king. I know. Well, I must go. But if you will, meet me here when the clock strikes two. There we may be alone. I am the happiest of women. I have performed my brilliant action. I have saved the king. And now I wait to meet my man. The first man I have ever loved. I should be the happiest of people. But what has become of my friends? I owe my life to them. For it was I who drew them into this affair, of which they knew neither the origin nor the aim. And now they lie beaten, senseless, perhaps dead. <laughs> oh, beaten, senseless, perhaps, but certainly not dead. Athos! Why so dour, D'Artagnan? Have you lost your best friends? Did you desert them on the road, leaving them bleeding like slabs of old mutton? Porthos, Aramis! You are alive! Unfortunately, I am. <laughs> you may have thought you were rid of us, D'Artagnan, but we are not that easily dislodged. I am overjoyed! But how did you all survive? Aramis had five days in a convent, surviving on nothing but legumes. <laughs> And Porthos ate every last scrap of food in the Golden Lily, and then lounged in bed and was waited upon like a pasha. And you, Athos? <laughs> I do not truly remember. Uh, oh, yes, and you, D'Artagnan, did your cause meet with success? I did not fail. You have saved the honor of His Majesty. This is the sort of brilliant action that will admit you to the musketeers. Is that true? This is extraordinary! I've done everything a woman could want. My friends are safe home. And now I wait to meet my man. The first man I ever loved. Good evening, ladies. I can see that you are celebrating. Unfortunately, I need to inform you that your gentleman will not be keeping his appointment tonight. I'm afraid he has other plans. What do you mean? What have you done? Let us say that the Cardinal has found him a new lodging. You have underestimated the wrath of a very powerful woman. I will kill you, rock boy! Okay, yes, my friend, this is not the time. My heart, my soul, Conrad!
Gossip. Her eminence is displeased. Our task of retrieving the king's diamonds had a rather pathetic outcome. That was not my fault. No, you were outwitted by a tailor and his musketeer. As were you. What more is the cardinal want from me? If the great woman is so disappointed, let her take care of this herself. Richelieu has already imprisoned Conrad Bonacieux, but she will not move against the girl. She would rather keep an eye on her. Her eminence requests that you become involved. With a musketeer? Her name is D'Artagnan. Find out what she knows. Turn her head. She fancies herself a hero. She should have an easy head to turn. And what about the tailor? There is no need to worry about Monsieur Bonacieux. So shall I tell her eminence that you wish to restore your credit with her? Will the cardinal ever be satisfied? This is not a convenient time, Rochefort. Ah, yes. The dim-witted Countess de Ward. Marriage to rich dimwit would solve all your problems. How long must I stay in service to the cardinal? Even I have only so many lives. Is it wise to bet your next one on de Ward? I haven't seen the Countess lately. I think she has forgotten you. Or perhaps she has found oh, you. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but may I enter? Why, of course, Jasper. How else do you expect to wait on me? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you might forgive me. Straight but... boy, it's a letter. Pardon me, I'm so sorry. It is from your Countess de War. Perhaps she's not so dim-witted after all. She's indisposed this afternoon, but she's available at night if you wish to offer something more. Get out, you idiots! I shall tell her enemies how delighted you are to remain in her service. As always, it is a pleasure doing business with you. It has been three weeks now, and still no word if we shall go to war. We're forced to wait much longer. The enemy need not fear. Boredom will have ravished us. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Athos? Yes. What is your wager, Athos? I'll bet you 50 pistols will be sent to war. Everyone knows we'll march as soon as Buckingham enters the fray. I'll wager 50 pistols we will not be sent to war. Athos, I only have 10. I will loan you the rest. This is a wager you can't lose. Ladies, so why would you make such a bet? It is almost certain that we will go to war. War has nothing to do with it. I enjoy the probability. I cannot bear this waiting. The man I love is in danger. I have tried at least a dozen times to find him. Conrad is lost. If your lover is lost, so much the worse for him. Let him get himself found again. To lose your man is one thing, D'Artagnan. But to have him carted off like an overflowing basket, that is quite another. Here's Aramis. I need someone who appreciates my heart. I believe Aramis is off writing poetry. She's published several volumes, <laughs> one inspired by my bravery. Inspired by your gluttony. Aramis must return soon. Who can stay away knowing we may soon engage in war? I shall dazzle the enemy. Very soon I shall have 500 pistols and a Spanish charger. How will you manage, Porthos? I have a patron, my friend. My duke has promised to furnish me in splendor. Is he young and handsome? He's a delicate flower, and he loves me. Ladies, I've just received word that the Duchess of Buckingham has sent aid to the Protestant rebels at La Rochelle. In response, the queen has ordered us to lay siege. Both musketeers and <clears throat> Cardinal's guard will be fighting against the rebels. So you will lay aside your former rivalries. You have 14 days to outfit yourselves for war. 14 days? How am I to outfit myself in so short a time? What about your duke? D'Artagnan, Aramis is in the prayer chapel of St. Augustine. Who will tell her the news of the campaign then. The king has assured me the crown depends on everyone. Give me this letter. The king? 
Did you go to the Louvre? Did he tell you anything of Conrad? His Majesty knows where Monsieur Bonescue is being held. Keep your head. The king will free your man. Send him away from Paris. Why did you not tell me this sooner? Who will rescue him? Why cannot The I... Cardinal has her eye on you, D'Artagnan! You are not to interfere! That's in order! Find Aramis! Go! Yes, Captain. Athos, will you not be joining us? I am not in a church building mood. Shall I find you later then? Who knows? Perhaps I can still fit in one last quarrel with a dozen cardinals' guards. Then I would die in the queen's service without having to furnish myself for this war. My dear friend, there's no talking to her when she's like this. Right, let's go. Mysteriatur nostri omnipotens Deus et. Demisis peccatis nostris, perdugat nos ad vitam eterna. Amen. survive. And you shall never know for sure. And why is that? In my pitiful apparel, they shall take my corpse for that of a bellows maker. Do not talk of corpse, darling. I must speak of such things. Take your farewell, my love. Think of me in a pauper's grave in La Rochelle. Porthos, my night, my oh. happiness. I will not send you to the front like a beggar. One of my wife's clients owns a tannery, oh. and I'm sure I can get a good bargain. He speaks of bargains for a magnificent soldier like me. What shall I do? You could come to my house and talk it over. My wife is engaged, and perhaps I can open the strong box. Oh, could you, my darling? Shall we go right now? Come, light of my life. Oh, Porthos, I cannot exist without you. <laughs> this is something we must keep to ourselves. Oh, absolutely, mademoiselle. Search the far chapel for Aramis. I will look here. In two weeks' time, we lay siege on the Huguenot rebels at La Rochelle. Vanitas vanitatu. At one point, I may have been carried away by such a folly, but now, with the help of God, I am to become a Jesuit. Miss, you cannot join the church now. I do not join the church. I rejoin the church. I do not understand. Once, I was set to join the Jesuit order, but fate intervened. What happened? When I was at seminary, I tutored a man, a handsome man. One night his tutor, a jealous captain, lay in wait for me as he left his house. 
She grabbed you by the arm and she threatened, never return to this place, you pious altar server. If you do, I will whip you the same way I whip my dog. She laughed and then walked away. What did you do? I was so overcome by this insult. I left the seminary, abandoned my studies, and moved to Paris, where I trained the best fencing masters. On the anniversary of that insult, I sought the captain out, and I challenged her. I said, remember me. Would you still like to whip me the same way you whip your dog? We drew our swords, and with the first pass, I struck her dead. Passion and vanity betrayed me, D'Artagnan. I gave up the cassock. But now, I am determined to return to the bosom of the church. Forgive me, Aramis. I meant no disrespect. Before I forget, I have a letter for you. A letter? Yes, I suppose it must have arrived in your absence. Who is it from? I only know it comes from the Louvre. D'Artagnan, let me see the letter. If only I could find it. Have you misplaced it? Well, I had it right here. D'Artagnan, let me see the letter. Here it is. Divine dreams. He has forgiven me at last. He puts no trust in gossip. He won't listen to what the other men say. My happiness suffocates me. I'm starving. Let's go to the pineapple. We'll get a rack of mutton, a larded hare, and some fat spice sausages. Ah, come, friend, tell me, what has been going on in the world? Furnish our table. I will find Blanche and catch up with you very soon. Are you all right? I'm still a little faint. Here, lean on me. What may I do to offer you assistance? It would be helpful if you would remain here for just a moment. Jasper, I'll be all right. Of course, I will not leave your side until you are fully recovered. Oh, thank you. You are very kind. I had been praying for someone. Someone who is gone. You've lost someone. Someone I love. How remarkable. I suffer the same kind of injury. Yes, I can see the grief in your eyes. It is a lonely plight, is it not? Yes, it is. I am very grateful to you, mademoiselle. If I may repay your kindness with an invitation, I do entertain society most every evening. Number six, the Place Royale. Do come and visit me. It would be an honor. I thank you again. Come, Jasper. Let us go. Mademoiselle. Thank you. Your name is Jasper? Yes, Mademoiselle. D'Artagnan. Would you kindly tell me the name of your lord? Oh, uh, the Count de Winter, Mademoiselle. A count, no less. You may accept his invitation, Mademoiselle. However, should you arrive earlier in the day, you may be admitted by me around the side at the pantry door. Pleasure. How does one find one's way to Royale. What exactly are you asking? Oh! Beauty that has my life held captive in your eyes. You have revived my soul with smiling, gracious eyes. Come soon, come to me soon. Help me or I must die. If I may speak. less than eight days left together in your military wares, and not to mention the needs of your most resourceful servant! I've been busy with other matters. I know. 
You visit an account every evening. If you don't mind my saying, Mademoiselle, a musketeer should be a woman of action, not a woman of pleasure. I think she may be both. Angels, Angels, where have you been? Open up. Angels, are you wounded? I'm drunk. Magic, go down to my cellar. Bring us each a bottle. I'll see if there's anything left. Good woman. Athos, my philosopher, I'm in need of your advice. My advice is never clearer than when I'm in my cups. Tell me, are you still in despair over the king's tailor? Why is it now, Count? <laughs> Porthos is not the woman to tell your secrets to, my girl. I still wish to rescue Conrad. To rescue one man, you make love to another? <laughs> it is the longest way, but by far the most amusing. I have not made love to the Count. But I am fascinated, Ethos. He is a handsome man of wit. He invites me to his apartments alongside countesses and ladies. And amongst all these well-heeled women, he singles me out for conversation. I'm beginning to think he admires me. There is not a lover who thinks her woman, love, man, admires her. And there's not a woman who has not been deceived by her lover. Except for you, who's never had one. I wonder what you would say if I were to tell you a love story. About yourself. No, my friend. What matters? Tell me, Athos. This is a story of a friend. A noble woman who lived in my province. A noble woman who, when young, became enamored of a boy. His soul seemed not to belong to any earthly creature, but to that of an angel. He was far beneath her station. As a lady of her estate, she might have chosen to seduce him or seize upon him with force. But she was a woman of honor. So against all advice, she married him. She gave him her title, her lands, her love. Oh, oh, oh how she loved him. <laughs> they have been married three days when, while hunting together, he fell from his horse and fainted. The Countess flew to his side and loosened his clothes so that he might breathe more easily. She was struck by the beauty of his shoulder, which she had never seen bare in the daylight, and then she saw, in sharp contrast to the light of his skin, a mark, mark branded upon only the most despicable of criminals, a floor de lis. What did she do? I do not truly remember. Let us only hope he is lucky enough to be dead. That story cured me of loving men. May God grant as much to you. Forgive me, Athos. I cannot drink anymore. Young women nowadays do not know how to stand their drink. Dear Countess de Ward, you have sent no answer to my previous inquiries, and I fear all is not well. Take this last opportunity, Countess. If your intentions are honorable, you may come to my darkened chambers tonight. My curtain will be drawn, but my servant boy will admit you. Jasper, Jasper! Deliver this to the Countess at once, and when she arrives, darken. Mademoiselle D'Artagnan! Good evening, Jasper. My 
good man. Tell me, how is your countenance? Oh, D'Artagnan, you must go. My lord is not receiving tonight. He will see me. He must see me. Tell him I am here. You, you leave with the regiment tomorrow, do you not? That is why I must see your count tonight. Then I am resolved to tell you the truth. My master does not care for you at all. Did he ask you to tell me so? No, no, no. But this morning he sent me to deliver a letter inviting the Countess de War to his darkened chambers. Tonight, that is why he is not receiving. He awaits her arrival even now. Countess de War. I took the letter to the Countess, but she has made no reply. Oh, I'm afraid to tell him so. He, he dislikes disappointment. Mr. Ward, that is the woman I cut to pieces in Calais. Oh, no wonder she's not such a response. She limits me to mere conversation, only invites this invalid to his darkened chamber. Oh, you must take care. Help me, Jeff. No, I cannot. But you must. No, mademoiselle. In love, we must only help ourselves. So I shall. You say his room is completely dark. Yes, mademoiselle. Tell your lord that the Countess de Ward has arrived. But she has not. Oh, my!